There's an aspect of it that's intimidating a little bit because I'm coming in and I'm playing a character that's existed from day one um, and a, a character that Jared Gilmore did a wonderful job with and you know I really want to pay homage to that. Um, so, so it's a matter of retaining the essence uh, of, of who this character has always been but also acknowledging the fact that he's grown up now, he's an adult, there's been a, a, a large pass, passage of time and that he's a different person now. So um, making sure that that I bring something new and, and fresh to, to who this person is. It was very important to um, really immerse myself in the show and, and really get a strong sense of mainly the essence of the relationships that Henry has with the people that are closest to him in his life. Emma Swan, Regina, um, you know, Prince Charming, Snow White, all of those relationships, because uh, not only are some of these relationships still um, evolving, like his relationship with Regina, his relationship with Hook, uh, the relationships informed who he is as a person, who, who he's become as an adult. So that's all hugely important, and um, that, that was very much part of the preparation for it. This is a, a job that you dream of, you know? It, it, it's so hard these days. Maybe it's always been really hard, I guess, for a TV show to really catch on. You know, it's just difficult. And especially now, there's so much content out there. There's so many television shows. And a lot of them, even though, that they're, even though they're really good, they just never quite find an audience. So to get to come in and work on a show that's been a huge success and, and, and does what it does so well is, you know, you kind of feel like you hit the lottery, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing. It, it comes with a lot of responsibility, but that's what you want, you know. So for it to be all those things, plus the fact that it's a real actor's job because, because you know, uh, so, many uh, so many actors get to come on and play various characters, various versions of the same character. In a lot of ways, I feel like uh, I get to do that as well because we see, we almost see two different versions of Henry. You know, we see in flashbacks, we're gonna see Henry uh, not long after we, we left him in season six and in the adventures that he's been on in various realms and fairy tale worlds. And then we also see the cursed version in uh, what is Hyperion Heights, uh, neighborhood of Seattle. And, and that's a very different person in a lot of ways. So, you know, I get to play these two sides um, and that's an actor's dream really. There's a sense of enthusiasm and excitement uh, that that sort of pervades the the set, and it's so much fun. Like everybody, you know, sp the, all of us new cast are just really excited to be a part of such a such a great show. That there's this there's this real sense of play. You know, we all want to just get in there and and play and experiment and figure it out and just and just find you know who these characters are and and create this world um, and. They are all, you know, Gabrielle, Danya, um, you know, Makia Cox, all these, all these people who are coming in uh, are, they, everybody just seems to have this, this really great sense of play about them and this sense of exploration. And that's what you want, especially for a show like this, you know, so it's just been fun, you know, it's just been really fun. It's the same show that it's always been. It's, it's the same writers, it's the same creators. They're, they're still maintaining the same spirit that the show has always had. You know, they're still working within the structure of, of flashback fairy tale, you know, present day real world, playing with both of those worlds and, and slowly revealing, you know, backstories and origins to these characters. It's all the same thing. And then plus, we, you know, we're, uh, we, we still have uh, uh, Gold and Rumpelstiltskin and uh, Regina and, and the Evil Queen and, and Hook and, you know, um, these characters that, that fans have loved for years, they're still very much a part of it. Um, so, so the spirit of the show is still the same, uh, but we've got all of these exciting, fresh new characters and these new stories, you know, so it's really the best of both worlds. It's such a, a universally appealing show. I mean, it's it's a show that that tells fairy tales over and over. And you know, we we as a culture never get tired of that. You know, it's it's uh, it's something that 
it becomes enjoyable immediately as soon as you're old enough to understand what a story is. And it's something that never really gets old, you know, uh, no matter how, how old you get. And uh, yeah, what they've done that's, that's so genius and, and so cool with the show is that they've managed to, to tell these, these fairy tales that everybody knows, but also weave in this modern day real world element to all of it. Um, and it's just, uh, it's just a very special, unique thing. Joining something that's so well established could have been very tricky. I mean, it's no matter what line of work you're in, if you're coming in as the new person and trying to sort of navigate your way through something that's been so um, grandfathered, uh, it actually could have been very tricky, but it's been, we've been welcomed with open arms. I think that the original cast that, that remains is um, really pleased to have some new energy, some new life. So I think that they are quite um, pleased to have this sort of rejuvenation for the show. And I've certainly been treated with um, uh, tremendous grace being new on the set. I think it's probably quite difficult for the, the hardcore um, viewers who have been so, um, so involved and so invested in these stories and these characters from day one. I think it's hard to accept that there's uh, a whole new storybook opening. Um, but I think if they're the true believers that they say they are, that they have to have faith in the storytellers of the show. They're not gonna lead them astray, they're going to lead them further deeper into the journey that they've already invested in. What I love most about Once Upon a Time is that my 13-year-old and my 23-year-old daughters both watch it as avidly as each other. So that just goes to show you that um, as a contemporary piece of, of fiction on our televisions, that it speaks to two different generations, to women, to young girls, and that there's, um, that there's hope for all types of people, genders, uh, denominations, uh, ethnic cultures. It's, it's just this open door for exploration into fantasy. My version of Cinderella, and what's great about it is because, you know, once upon a time, there's these incredible flashbacks where you get to meet the character um, and, and get to see their backstory before the, you meet them in the real world. In the real world, my name is Hacienda. And in the real world, I have a daughter uh, by the name of Lucy who is very reminiscing of who Henry was, uh, episode one of the pilot of Once Upon a Time, just the believer, the, you know, you have to believe and there's hope and, and wanting us to, to see beyond what we think we, we are and, and see past those struggles. But I, and I also get to play, you know, Cinderella when she first falls in love and when telling that story is gonna be a completely different version and, and a different journey because I'm coming from a different place. I have a, I'm not a damsel in distress, and I think a lot of times when you think of Disney princesses, you think of them as um, waiting for their prince to save them, and that's not the version that I'm playing. She's badass. She's out to also find her own story, and somehow meets Henry along the way, and we go in this incredible adventure together. We're falling in love. It's iconic and it's groundbreaking uh, for so many reasons. You know, growing up in, in the Dominican Republic, I never once thought, like, I'm going to grow up one day and be playing a Disney princess, let alone Cinderella, because you have these ideas of what that character has been and what she looks like. So it's been really, you know, refreshing to know that I'm, I'm doing a, a love story and a new rendition of Cinderella in my way, different struggles, different life, and coming from an edgier perspective. It's, it's exciting. It's exciting. I'm, I was excited when I, when I found out that I got the job. What's really great is that I went into audition to, for the testing process. I didn't know that I was auditioning for Cinderella. They told me, just come in for a character and we just wanna see if you have chemistry with um, Andrew West who's playing um, the older version of Henry. So I walked in very much like, bringing my own thing to it, and that's what made it really you know, exciting for me. And I also, coming into a show that's, that's been, has such a su success, 
and I've had that happen in so many other times in my career. Like I went into Sopranos the last, you know, the last se seasons of, of Sopranos. I went into Buffy the Vampire Slayer was my first, you know, recurring role as an actress when I first came to LA. So I think I'm used to walking into an environment that's been set up. What's great is that I walk into everything with a very open mind and very fresh, and I was able to connect with the characters, the, the people that are playing the characters that have been there before, and they've been such great mentors for me in this new journey, and the fans are so amazing. So I'm just excited for them to watch. Believe and hope. I, I, there, there's not, there aren't that many shows nowadays that really are centered around this, the, the idea of a fairy tale, the wanting a happy ending. And I think in our lives, life is hard on an everyday basis. So it, it's great to tune in and feel like you can, you know, check out of your life and walk into this fairy tale world and really almost see yourself within these people and 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 find your own journey to your own happy ending. And I think that's why people tune in. That's why I tuned in. We are picking up with, uh, you know, we saw our little kid Henry is now grown up and he finds himself in Seattle under a new curse. And uh, we know that some of his family has come to help him. We see Rumpelstiltskin, we see Captain Hook, and we see Regina. And so for us, we really wanted to, you know, after six seasons, give some of our characters like Snow and Charming and their happy ending. But we feel like it's time to, we've, although we've ended the chapter of that book, it's time to begin a new one. Yeah, season seven is the start of a new chapter. Some, some of the characters return, some new ones join us. We begin a new adventure. When we knew Henry as a, a, a little boy, he had the heart of the truest believer, and now he no longer believes. And so it's up to his 10-year-old daughter, Lucy, to get him to return that belief, and what she believes will break this curse. And so I think you find Henry is now a writer. He wrote a book that contained all the stories of the first six seasons, but he believes they're not real. He believes he just made them up. And he uh, now drives a car. He is a Swift driver, which is the clearable Uber. And uh, Henry is trying to make it in this world. And I think, you know, the reason, the very first um, season we were on the Snow White mythology, and I think people will see we're on the Cinderella mythology, which really works in the real world. I think a lot of people feel like they're kept down and they can't get ahead and they are struggling and they need hope and that is why you know for us we wanted to do a new version of the show in the modern day to reflect the times we're in we're bringing in um, a whole bunch of new cast this year among them um Danya ramirez who's playing cinderella and she's amazing and she's got a whole new take on the character and we have some surprising twists and turns to the cinderella story yeah, we're gonna meet her wicked stepmom, played by Gabrielle Lenoir, uh, who is very extra evil. We are gonna meet uh, the wicked stepdaughter, who is played by Adelaide Kane. Um, and we're gonna meet some new princesses that we never got to. We're going to uh, meet Makia Cox, who's playing Tiana. Um, we're also gonna have Alice in Wonderland, played by Rose Reynolds. Everybody loves the idea of, you know, hope. And I think that no matter how dark our stories get, you know, everyone knows that at the end of the day, there's going to be light at the tunnel. And, and I think that's what keeps people coming. I think that no matter where you're from, no matter who you are and how you grew up, fairy tales are a part of your life. And I think everybody connects to them in different ways. And that's something that I think the show may have tapped into. And, uh, you know, and now in this, uh, this new iteration of the show, we'll be exploring some new fairy tales and retelling some old ones. When we started seven years ago, we started the pilot at the end of the Snow White story to say that we weren't just retelling what you've seen, we're gonna tell our own versions. And for us, that was kind of the fun about it. You know, there was a lot of mysteries to us. Why is Grumpy Grumpy? Why is the Wicked Stepsister Wicked? And so we wanted to show that got underneath and, and took these characters that a lot of people just only remember from the cartoon or a toy and make them real people. You know, for us, it's not about happy endings, it's about happy beginnings, and that's, that's something that uh, makes it exciting as storytellers and hopefully for the audience that stories that you, you think you know how they end could go on in a whole new direction and you can take these characters and hopefully make them dimensional and real and give them some surprising twists and really find the humanity within them all.